What went wrong with Dragonflight PvP by skill capped WoW PvP guides? All right, let's see. Right now, World of Warcraft has more players than it did in Legion. Dragonflight has offered more content than ever before, while fixing some of the biggest issues from previous expansions. But if WoW is doing so well, why does PvP suddenly feel so dead? Why? Of course, the player base is now fractured, more than ever. But you could join a solo shuffle queue right now and watch this entire video before getting a pop. Well, and even let's see if that happens. If you're an experienced player, Arena can feel overwhelming. We can't even imagine what it feels like to be a new player in 2024. Add-ons have become part of the metagame itself, and classes now have more damage. Oh my god, this guy has the worst UI in the game. P make is a very nice individual, but his UI... How do you actually put all of your buffs over your character? How is it even possible that you can play the game without even seeing your character? ...mobility and micro CC than any other point in WoW's history. How did this happen? And more importantly, what can we do to fix it? This video is going to focus on Solo Shuffle, which has become the most popular PvP mode by far, but not without a few consequences. From class balance to queue times, incentives, and more, Solo Shuffle might have changed PvP forever, and some players are scared for the future. But we think there are a few simple solutions that already exist in the game itself Let's that see could it. make PvP flourish in the war within. So join us as we take a deeper dive into class design in Dragonflight and some of the ways PvP could be improved for the future. All right, let's see it. Everywhere you look, you will see one basic complaint about PvP. Arena is too overwhelming, which makes add-ons practically required. Oh yeah, and queue times are long, but more on that later. Anyway, <laughs> let's be honest, Arena does feel hard these days, and it's hard to pinpoint why. But add-ons have become one solution. This is what Seedoo's UI looked like during Warlords of Drainer. And oh my god, it was such a nice UI. Look at this UI. I, I, solution. This is what Oh my god, look at Cedu's UI, dude. Oh my god, bro. It looks so nice. Look at it. You can see what's happening. You can understand. Like, oh my god, it's a lovely. Cedu's UI looked like during Warlords of Drainer. And this is what his UI looks like now. It seems like half of his screen is covered with weak auras, cooldown trackers, nameplates, and more. Without a doubt, add-ons have become infinitely more complex in the past three expansions, turning a game that is supposed to feel alive and immersive into your grandma's Internet Explorer back in 2000. That's true. Good. That's a great analogy. And seven. Solo Shuffle is just one reason why UIs got to this point. Without communication, you need a million different alerts letting you know what's going on. But we think the issue is multiple layers deep. The problem isn't Solo Shuffle alone, but also class design and more specifically, power creep. As WoW gets older and more complex, classes get updated and start to become way more complicated every single expansion. This but you know what's really uh, unfortunate? Um, is I feel like with what we've seen from Hero Talents, they're actually going in, they're even going further down that hole. Like, uh, yeah, some of the stuff we've seen from Hero Talents with, uh, you know, additional just random modifiers and additional you know, uh, secondary stat buffs and like all these things that are happening and more mobility and blah, blah, blah. It's actually, they're actually going in the opposite direction. Just unique to WoW and happens in almost every single game. PvP has seen power creep in multiple places and mobility is the most obvious. Ever since the introduction of Demon Hunters in Legion, there's been an arms race in the way characters move. This same expansion is when Paladins would get Divine Steed and some melee would even get extended range on their attacks. Ah. Sword of Dragonflight and a spec like Outlaw Rogue has Shadow Step, Grappling Hook, Sprint with 100% move speed, three extra yards on every attack, and even an attack that charges them to their target. Dude, Outlaw Rogues are ridiculous. Grappling Hook, Shadow Step, Sprint, Blade Rush or whatever it's called. It, they have five gap closers. Best part, almost all of this can have its cooldown and extra range by spending combo points. In fact, mobility is so ridiculous that a simple macro can make it look like rogues are cheating. Just watch this player after they shadow step Venruki. This is me. In case you missed it, here it is again. The rogue kicks and then instantly hooks back, having nearly 100% uptime while landing CC. Next expansion, Death Knights will be getting their own version of Divine Steel. No! Them to mount in combat. Right now, melee is winning the race, but we've seen glimpses of what can happen when casters get their own power creep. But why should you care about character movement? 
As Why? Corey Gaming pointed out, any buff to mobility is a buff to the entire toolkit. It means doing better damage since you have an easier time sticking on target, and this even applies to healers. You will do more healing if you have more movement. Being faster means it's easier to cross the map and even avoid CC. Obviously, moving faster is also a buff to survivability because it's harder to actually get hit. If you are a new player trying to pick up a caster, the melee mobility creep is going to be a nightmare. It will feel like you never have the chance to actually get away. Even if you manage to get a few seconds of breathing room, it probably won't last for long. And now you need to deal with the next power creep. Micro CC. Oh, this is I like that one. Misunderstand. Micro CC is not polymorph, cyclone, sap, or even hammer of justice. No, we're talking about something else. Micro CC is the smaller, shorter CC that is just there to add more disruption. It's not sap, but gouge. It's not the six second freezing trap. No, that's the CC. The micro CC is the three second silence from spider venom. It's the fact that even if a monk misses their kick, they can still ring a piece to stop a cast. The metagame in 2024 is dictated by smaller micro disruptions in gameplay. Everyone's goal in arena is to make sure the enemy team can't control their character. And <laughs> it's gotten to the point where even a spell like Intimidating Shout was used as a stun effect, with Absturge getting controlled for almost three seconds by a fear while getting trained, eventually leading to elimination. Yeah, that got nerfed, to be fair. That was like a very small window in a patch for that specific example, but I do think, yeah, micro CCs are crazy. From the AWC. Before the talent tree revamp, many CC spells used to share talent slots, but now many of these choices are available all at once. In Dragonflight, micro CC point. is what wins games. You're never 3 2 one your spells in a coordinated effort, but instead just denying your opponent from playing the game while you blast them with damage. This has even led to a completely backwards playstyle for some classes. Ironically, despite having one of the strongest crowd control spells in the game, mages don't really have any micro CC, which means spending most games blinking backwards and being a spectator, hoping their demon hunter will win the game. <laughs> Patch 10.1 included nerfs to the duration of almost every CC in the game, which unintentionally shifted the balance in favor of micro CC. What's the point in overextending for a 6 second polymorph while losing out on damage when your infinite mobility rogue could just gouge at almost zero damage loss? That's true. We'll talk about damage in a second, but because burst DPS is so high, there isn't a need for clean setups. As long as you can just prevent someone from controlling their character, it doesn't matter how sloppy you play. Micro CC is also the reason why precog exists in the first place. With mobility creep and almost every class having an interrupt, there aren't many windows to actually cast. Watch me try and land a single cyclone on a demon hunter who won't even use their kick. Between two stuns, an incap, glimpse, and shadow meld, it's not even possible to cast a single time without losing most of my HP. Because of this, most casters have the majority of their damage coming from instant cast. It's really funny because uh, I feel... This is a funny one because I'll, I will watch some melee players. Like, I was watching... Uh, who was I watching? I was watching Naj, I think. And he was talking about how he feels like his kicks are completely irrelevant. Like... He's fighting against a Feral Druid and a Frost Mage. And the Feral Druid is just sitting there spamming clone. And the Frost Mage is just spamming Frost Bomb and Glacial and Ray and Polly and uh, Ring of Frost. And he's like, even if I kick them, it's just like a three second interrupt. And they just go kick, cast something else. Like the interrupts don't even feel like they matter. You know, so it's like both, both sides are kind of annoyed by how things have gone. Cast spells. And it's no surprise that specs with the best instant cast Yo, all, thanks for the, the prime, brother. gravitate towards the S tier. The power creep of mobility and micro CC might seem where this story ends, but we're not finished yet. Weak auras has become ubiquitous in PvP starting in Shadowlands, because during the early expansion, burst damage was at its peak. Oh With my god. Modifier, players were getting one shot like never before. Holy and even god. Even damage would be nerfed in early Dragonflight, there was another dramatic shift in class design that had been boiling over in the background, as now not only was burst damage high, but now every player was taking damage at once. This was a trend that had started in Legion. Class design was moving away from single target abilities in favor of damage that would automatically clear. Dude, look at my UI. Oh, look at this fucking UI. Like, isn't this insane to look at? This is what the game used to look like. This is actually what the game used to look like. This is how you used to play the game. Classes like mages were abandoning CC altogether in order to just AoE down every player at once. Why waste time casting Polymorph on the healer when you can just press Arcane Barrage to wipe out the whole team? That's true. Combine this with micro CC and you have a metagame based around splash damage, especially with the introduction of Evoker, whose signature ability as a mechanic borrowed directly from a raid boss. In the past, Frost DK was defined by its AoE setups, getting a huge damage spike with Pillar of Frost and then cleaving everyone down at once. 
but now it feels like most classes can do the same thing. Just crank up the damage meters and toss in a few stuns and suddenly you've learned how to PvP. So now in Dragonflight, we have a meta game defined by power creep with mobility, micro CC, and AoE damage. Classes and comps that once felt unique have converged into a single win condition. Yeah, I don't feel bad about reacting to this video. I feel like half the clips are of me, so that's good. Which is to simply do as much damage as possible, abusing a million different modifiers to inflate the damage of a single spell. There's less of a need for precise setups and calculated play, and more often than not, the only thing that matters is how much damage you can do and how quickly you can respond to a weak aura. At the time of writing this video, one of the most dominant comps on the 3v3 ladder is Rhett Paladin, Arms Warrior, and Fistweaver Monk. It yep. dominates with pure numbers, overwhelming healers with raw damage and micro CC. And that's mostly how the average solo shuffle game is played, since many classes simply have enough damage to kill through healing, especially during dampening. These days, balance is less about mechanics and more about numbers. How much DPS can you do and how little will <laughs> you so take? True. So, how did we get to this point in class design? In WoW, there's been a growing tension between class balance and class identity. In the past, everyone was defined by unique mechanics. Rogues had their stuns, hunters had their pets, and frosty Ks still kinda sucked. Having a unique class identity is cool and all, but it doesn't take long to realize that some mechanics are really nice to have, especially in PvP. Warriors used to be defined by Mortal Strike and were one of the few classes to actually have this mechanic, but as it turns out, reducing healing in PvP is pretty damn good. So good that these days almost every single melee in the game has Mortal Strike. And even Warlocks have it too, but it gets even more ridiculous. Demon Hunter have a Mortal Strike. Two stuns. One of them is AoE, by the way. What more? Oh yeah, an instant cast Polymorph or Cyclone, an AoE Fear, a magic dispel for some reason, and they basically have speed hacks. Demon Hunter <laughs> is a pretty extreme example, but you get the point. Mechanics that were once unique are now passed around like a joint at a Snoop Dogg concert. This is known as <laughs> homogenization, which causes classes to lose their identity over time in the sake of game balance. There is a private server called Project Ascension. Yeah, I'm going to link the video, guys, after ability. I'm done with it. In this it. game, there are no classes. Obviously, we're not at this point, but you can start to see the extreme end of homogenization. It might seem cool, but it takes away the identity of playing a unique class. The cool part about playing a rogue is being a tactician, but these days more and more specs are becoming brawlers, even sub-rogues, who at one point were topping damage with rupture, all while tab-targeting to kill the entire team. Now, we don't want to go pointing fingers, but PvE and especially Mythic Plus were a big part of homogenization. Mythic Plus is by far the most popular game mode in Season 3, with almost 300,000 runs per day. That's compared crazy. To Solar Shuffle, which doesn't even scrape that amount per week. The Mythic Plus... That's crazy. That many people do Mythic Plus actually blows my mind. ...player base is almost 10 times the size of PvP, so it kind of makes sense what direction Blizzard might lean to when figuring out class design. To do big pulls in Mythic Plus, you need your group to quickly dodge mechanics, all while having enough kicks and CCs to stop multiple casts in a row. Hmm, mobility and lots of CC. This sounds familiar. Mythic Plus also has DPS checks every few minutes, with pressure points based around big pulls and boss timers, which means you need big burst damage in very specific moments, and on trash, you're going to need to spam your AoE stops while pumping out as much AoE damage as possible. Okay, so lots of CC, high mobility, cleavy burst damage. Jeez, this really reminds me of something else. Oh yeah, those bosses in Mythic Plus have these big one-shots. That means every class needs to have strong defensives. And if they die without using them, well, that's their healer's fault. I wonder where I've heard this all before. We don't think it's a massive <laughs> conspiracy to say PvE might have had a massive effect on class identity. Well, it, when, I went, when I went on the uh, podcast, um, what is it called, Potty C, and I was talking to Max about this, and I actually, I talked to... Um, uh, automatic jack about this too and in pve they don't even like it that much they don't like how it feels like healing consistent damage is a joke healers are actually i swear healers are super op and i know when i say that you're gonna think i'm an insane but healers are actually insane like if you go play a random battleground and there's one healer he can easily keep five people up with like no effort whatsoever when there's no dampening in the game and you're not being cc'd indefinitely the amount of hps you can deal with if it's not just an outright one shot is absolutely ludicrous. So the only way that things die, and this is the same thing in PVE, is if you get one shot. Like healing through the damage is super easy unless somebody just absolutely gets one shot, um, which can be kind of frustrating because exactly what this video is saying, if your uh, DPS doesn't use like an external cooldown to survive the one shot, then you just die and there's nothing you can do as the healer, which is kind of crazy. It's really spiky. Entity and class balance. 
Because it's no accident that the mobility and AoE damage shift we saw in Legion was a direct result of a new game mode that just happened to be released at that time, where dungeons need to be cleared as fast as possible by pulling multiple mobs at once. And now, these power creeps have fully spilled over into PvP, becoming even more amplified thanks to Solo Shuffle, a game mode where raw- Axton says nobody can die in high-rated RPG teams unless you knock healers off the edge or kidnap with a blood DK. That is so ridiculous. Damage reigns supreme. The add-on problem that many people talk about wouldn't be such an issue if the game weren't so power crap. You wouldn't need 10 different alerts letting you know the enemy team popped their giga AoE offensive. Now, here's where things get a bit touchy. There's a lot of people who enjoy Solo Shuffle for a few good reasons. I do! Let's face it, the WoW community is getting older and some of us have busy lives. Maybe our friends have moved on from WoW and we don't want to sit in LFG. For many players, Solo Shuffle is really <laughs> the only way to participate in ranked PvP. It's clear that many players want to just press play and get immediately into the action. Other players are more pessimistic, arguing that Solo Shuffle is literally killing PvP. One thing they will say is that Solo Shuffle gameplay doesn't feel like real arena. To them, Solo Shuffle is the fast food of PvP. It's addicting and gives you what you instantly want, but maybe it's not the healthiest. And right now, it's the only thing people want to eat. There is a growing sentiment that arena has started to feel more like PvE. In Solo Shuffle, where you can't really coordinate crowd control or even damage itself, it makes sense that simply cleaving right, the gonna, enemy team... We're going to pause right here. Stop. And I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to take this key. We'll see if we get it. The key popped before the video ended, but to be fair, I did pause it a few times, so... And I think I got lucky, and it might not actually pop. Oh, okay. ...itself. It makes sense that simply cleaving the enemy team down and stopping casts like Mythic Plus would become the emerging playstyle. But this has even crept into 3v3 itself, where even a comp like RMP can just win with raw numbers. But with the convenience of Solo Shuffle, participation in other brackets has gone down dramatically. RBGs are especially dire, with daily games sometimes being less than 200. That's and crazy, with the what? introduction of BG Blitz as a rated mode, RBG participation could become entirely extinct in the future. Currently, arena rewards and other brackets are becoming harder and harder to get. Since participation is a big factor in MMR, less people playing means less rating inflation, and less inflation means a confusing sense of progression from season to season. Yep. Rookie recently tweeted that his shaman is 600 rating lower than it was in season one, despite the fact that he feels better playing the spec. This confusing sense of progression kills motivation for many players. It is and true. Keeps them more attached to a single. And player. I know you guys want to blame big streamers. All right. I saw the comments on my last video. Oh, Vinruki, this is your fault. You play alts. Yeah, well, you know what? It's not my fault. I want to play the game. Okay, people make alts. Yes. Higher rated players playing at lower rating is a problem. I agree. But the main sickness is that when you get high rating, you can't do anything. So you have two options as somebody who enjoys the game a lot. Once you get to your high rating, you just sit there and wait in direly long queues. You just wait and wait and wait. Two hours for solo shuffle queues to pop or you make another character and you play. If there was an actual good amount of inflation, you could feel like you could actually make rating gains and play. It's the thing we've all been complaining about. This didn't happen nearly as much in season one of Dragonflight, and that's because there was much more of a range, right? So let me give you an example. In, at the end of last season, people were pushing, I think, 3,600 rating. Like rank one and threes was like 3,200 and... Uh, rank one and shuffle was like 3600 and i used to think that that was absurd but i think that's actually much better i think that it's totally fine if rating gets up to like 3500 3600 because it allows the more casual players to play at like 2100 2200 2300 2400 and actually earn rewards without fighting the literal best players in the game so i think the bigger problem is that there's just no inflation whatsoever it's been hard capped it's been knee capped the top players can't gain any rating, and I know you want to blame people for making alts, but it's a system problem. Bracket. So how can we get people to play other brackets? Foxy Lama says, I haven't progressed all at all this season, even though uh, I've been top 10 99% of the season. Yeah, so Foxy Lama has been in the top 10 for 99% of the season, and his rating hasn't moved. And the, literally in Solo Shuffle, the top of the... Fr I, I mostly pay attention to the Frost Mage things, but I swear, to, I swear in the last two months, rating has maybe gone up a hundred a hundred rating the very top player and when i look at the ladder i'm pretty sure cubsy has been number one in threes for like the last two months or something like that i don't think cubsy has played at all i think danny carry on russell druid is still number one and he hasn't played in months like there's just no inflation 
So that's why people make alts because there's no progression. So you could try to blame us, blame the streamers, but uh, that's not the issue. Brackets more without completely making solo shuffle obsolete. Hmm. Surely there has got to be a system that encourages people to participate in PvP while also attracting new players. Hmm. If there's one thing players love more than standing around Elwyn, it's looking cool while doing it. I mean, that's why we play the game, right? We know for a fact that cosmetics are highly coveted rewards for many players. And apparently, some people are willing to play Fortnite WoW Edition just to get a pirate transmog. A trading post type system specific to PvP seems yeah, but like- they're gonna cry about it the whole time. Just remember that. I thought that Plunderstorm was awesome. I thought it was great content to get an extra transmog, something different, something fun, but the amount of tears I saw about that was insane. An obvious way to motivate participation in other brackets. Imagine a log that sent you to win 2v2, 3v3, or RBGs, resetting every month with new rewards. These rewards could be anything, like black market auction house containers. They could even be old elite sets, but probably reskinned. Healers could even get their own unique rewards, like bonus black market containers. Or a discount code for therapy. And a two-week vacation to get away from every demon. Yo, Zenfoss, thank you for the prom, brother. Anything that gets more healers participating means faster queue times for everyone else. The goal is to make sure players can enjoy everything WoW has to offer by offering incentives to play multiple brackets. As long as new players have a motivating reason to engage in PvP, and as long as we can make sure everyone is trying every bracket, PvP will naturally be in a better place. With more players, there could be a greater incentive to- So does that mean that there should also be rewards for doing Mythic Plus? Because I, I, I talked to Supertease about this, and this is something that nobody likes, but maybe it's actually good for the game when there's like one piece of gear that's good from the other other side of things. You could make it all, all cosmetic, I guess. So if you don't want to do it, you don't have to. But like, what if there was like a ring from PvP or a trinket from PvP, you know? Or maybe you did have to get like a little something something from Mythic Plus like the, in the BFA days. Is that good? I don't know. I'm not sure to rethink class design. We have to admit that Mythic Plus isn't going anywhere and designers will probably prioritize it over PvP for the time being, but maybe there is a solution here too. Even though the talent trees were meant to be evergreen systems, maybe it's time for PvP and PvE to finally have completely different talent trees. Some classes need dramatic reworks in PvP. Frost Mage is just one example. It's suffering from button bloat, with not one, not two, but three different and easy to counter burst spells. To fix this, the entire spec would need to be rebuilt from the ground up in PvP. But instead of class tuning these days, it's- I actually like Frost Mage right now, low key. It's more about adjusting PvP modifiers up and down. The entire philosophy behind the original PvP talent system was to make sure classes could get major reworks without affecting PvE balance and vice versa. The issues we discussed today are just one of many affecting PvPers. We could have discussed other problems too, like map bloat and the fact that there are potentially way too many arena maps these days with many weird balancing issues. I meant to say Frosty K 100%? I don't think so. He showed Ray of Frost and Glacial Spike and Frost Bomb. I don't think they meant Frosty Kiss. When players were discussing a solo game mode three years ago... Oh, look at me! The intention was to make sure there was a way to instantly queue and get into the action. But since solo shuffle lasts six rounds, there is a slow churn of players caused by congestion, which is why queue times can last so long for DPS, since you're just waiting for someone else's six rounds to end. Button bloat is its own issue, and many players think that rotations are becoming too complicated. We know that PvP combat can feel engaging even with seven abilities. I, I'm going to be honest, the worst defender that I've played so far, so there, there, I've played a lot of different specs, okay? So I, I, I have played a ton of different specs uh, this season, and the worst defender I've ever seen is Outlaw Rogue. Outlaw Rogue is absolutely ludicrous what you have to do, and I, I think that the spec borderlines on being unplayable without add-ons. I really... After playing it, I genuinely believe it. I think for Outlaw Rogue, if you're not using like weak wars and add-ons to help you with your rotation, um, you, you're just completely screwing yourself. I, I haven't played any Death Knight, so maybe that's one too, but the, the rotation for Outlaw is not very intuitive. But you don't even have to take things that far. Between Arena 1, 2, 3 macros, talent swaps, and more, it's common to have over 40 keybinds in PvP, which is quite daunting as a new player. Even though players fought back pruning during Warlords of Drainer, a bunch of new hero talents on the way could mean WoW is getting even more complicated. Yeah, and benefit I don't from like a that. Return to more simplicity. Arena is already complicated enough, and if we want to attract new players to PvP, it shouldn't feel like you need an Adderall prescription and an encyclopedia just to play. 
It's always been our goal at Skillcap to make WoW PvP easier all right, all right. any player. And over the years, we've been lucky enough to see half a million players learn something valuable in WoW Arena and reach their rating goals. But we want to know what you think. Is WoW too overwhelming these days? If so, what changes do you want to see going into the next expansion? For now... What do I want to see? I want to see less add-ons. I want to see less complicated DPS rotations. I want to see uh, less modifiers. That would be a good start. We want to thank you all for watching. See you soon. I like that video. Great video. Love it. Give it a thumbs up. Give it a like. Interact with it.